Hello everybody and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. In today's episode, we start Pneumaticraft to get ourselves a pressurized chamber, thermonomatic processing plant, alloy kilns, and we make ourselves the crafting component blueprint for immersive engineering. Finally. So, I hope you enjoy. So today, we're going to be doing a bit of pneumatic craft. Now, a couple of things since last episode. We did a stream where I built a building over here, but I have since tore it down because I was not happy with it. But I've also changed my idea of what I'm going to be doing around here. So, we all know that I was planning on building a load of factories and everything over here and over there. Well, I'm thinking maybe I'll just do create and immersive engineering just over here because I need a lot of flat area. Because since we're going to be doing sequenced assembly for a lot of different things, I'm probably automating it if possible. I'm going to need really, really big, long, tall buildings. So I'm thinking of going with a warehouse style and building myself like really long warehouse buildings made out of brick and treated wood roofs and all that to make it look really industrial and have the inside with like balconies and runways and catwalks and whatever it, whatever they're called on the inside like so you can look down above everything it'll all be on one floor no two-story stuff on one floor but there will be staircases to like run along the top edge of the wall to be able to look down on all the machinery running so i think that would look cool and i'm thinking if i can i'll fit maybe about four to six of them here so like one two three four five six maybe clear away some of those trees and over here then, since we're not going to be putting our like thermal series mechanism and dust before going and what other mods and stuff, we'll put these all down over here in their own individual buildings and make them really big. We're going to be upscaling our like setup that we used to kind of have in Stasia, but like 10 times bigger. So I'll be doing like massive factory builds over here then to replace the big factories I'm not going to be building over there. So my render distance lower than normal. Maybe. So I've also tore down all the trees that were here and replanted new ones and made them two block space in between, but I'm not happy with it. So I'm going to be tearing this thing down and replanting them all and making only one block gap again uh, because we used to have a one block gap and three sets of trees, but now we're going to only have two sets of trees, but one black block gap in the middle. I'm also putting down this steel mesh fence so that we can have, oh, hello, <laughs> there's a brutish zombie stuck in the wall right here. I just one shot him. Lovely. Um, yeah, so for reasons just like that, I'm going to be putting this fence higher so the mobs can't make their way through the trees and disturb me if there is any mobs that will spawn over here because eventually there won't be since I'll have, well, you know, all these trees and everything over here will be lit up since we're going to be putting factories and everything. But yeah, just in case any mobs do make their way through, the fence there will stop them. So I'll be redoing the fence and I'm hoping... I'm going to have the, the trees come down to the edge of the factory here, kind of like maybe take a slight corner turn and kind of join it up like that. And then just have all of our magic stuff pushed in behind the wall in this direction. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of the plan. What do we actually get off this guy? A different jump lean thing, whatever. So yeah, other things you might've noticed, my hearts are blue. I managed to get myself the fifth piece so I have all five pieces of the broken heart trinkets. And also I killed an Apotheosis boss in the tomb because I was off looking for race spawners so I can get myself a ton of ectoplasm using like a race spawner setup. Because we are going to need ectoplasm now today for making ourselves coarse lapis um, compound. As you can see, we need ectoplasm. So I'm going to need that and you get that by killing wraith. So I have your spawner so I'll just have to take it out and set it up. But as I was in there, Apotheos boss spawned and I killed it and it, got, it dropped me a pair of pants that had plus eight hearts. So I ripped that enchant off using like the Apotheos tomes and applied it to my pants. So now I have blue hearts. Also, my idea of working with the Tetra thing adding a Fortune 7 on the left and right side, they actually do add together, making Fortune 14. This thing's insane. Breaking one diamond ore gives me like 20 something diamonds it's crazy and i'm also looking at it here since technically this enchantment is counted as one in here if we were to use like an enchantment extractor from industrial foregoing could we just apply fortune 14 to left and right side of the pickaxe 
and make Fortune 28? If that's possible, that would be amazing. Because I'm pretty sure we can get ourselves like a double-sided battle axe and apply Vorpal to both sides, get Vorpal 10, and then extract that off, apply Vorpal 10 to both sides again, and then have like Vorpal 20, to Vorpal 40. I don't think that would work though, but it'd be pretty cool if it did. But we're nowhere near making those enchantment extractors anytime soon. So yeah, uh, I don't think there's anything else I've done. Um, I don't believe so. This is actually like my fifth time trying to record this episode now. and Everything just keeps going wrong and... I feel like I just need to redo because they're not turning out the way I'm hoping. So if there's some things I'm repeating from last episode, because I'm all over the place at the moment, I don't know what I'm after saying or what I have done already. So if everything kind of seems a bit random, I apologize. And also if my voice is a bit muffled, I'm currently dying of allergies, so I apologize for that too. So let's get started. I don't want to waste too much more time because from the last recordings, I waste too much time in the stash. So I need to start off by making myself a smeltery now today because we're going to need to make this um, reinforced stone and that requires us pouring molten compressed iron on lake, light grey concrete and we're going to need a lot of it. So seared drain, we need to make ourselves a seared heater. Uh, do I not have all the bricks on me? Oh no, they're all in here. Okay, so I need myself a seared heater. I'm going to put away probably about eight of it in here because now I need to make myself an ingot cast or an ingot seared tank ingot thing there we go ingot tank i need one of these because i need to be able to take copper out of a magma crucible and pour it onto the seared heater here to make the controller so next i'm going to need to make myself a casting table a casting basin and a seared faucet and i think that's everything then except now for the seared tank that's going to require eight of this stuff and it's going to alt click to request some glass there we go, and I'll just take all this out with me. So I think I have every piece now except for just the controller, but now let's make ourselves a magma crucible. So that's gonna require two uranium gears, so make two of them. I don't wanna spend too much time crafting because I do notice that crafting does take a long time with this setup. If once they have refined storage, crafting won't take as long. So we need ourselves a basin. I'm gonna to need to put two seared brick away now as well. So there's a basin, send that back to and I think I have everything. I just need two copper coils. There's one, two, good. And I think I have everything for it now. So magma crucible request fluid cell frame not found. Have I not got one of these? Apparently not. There we go. Fluid cell frame, magma crucible. I should be able to craft it now. Okay, give it a second for everything to reach, reach the system. And also I need to turn on my map. Yeah, sometimes my map is enabled automatically when I join the world, and then sometimes it's not. And apparently there's a wandering trader on the side of that wall. I'm going to go check him out. Yeah, there we go. You can see now we're getting all the quests for that. So I don't have any copper in there because I've already thrown it all in the system. But you can see we have a lot more resources than before, like 3k iron, 1k uranium, 1k copper. I had no copper earlier. Now I do, thanks to our copper bees. So that's great. I just need four copper. Go over here, magma crucible, stick that up there and melt it down. Next up, I need to make myself a fractioning still. So I need to make one of these guys. The fractioning still is going to turn heavy oil into refined fuel. Because in this in expert mode, we need to use a liquid compressor to make pressure for our pressurized chamber, not just a regular air compressor, because that's disabled. So I got myself the fluid output, put that back in. Now I need to make myself a flare stack, but I need some um, immersive engineering pipes. Okay. Next up, I'm going to need... No, not this guy. This guy. Flare stack. I should be able to request that now. Perfect. Flare stack. And I think I have everything else. I bought some steel scaffolding off one of the villagers. And I think I have some fluid cells made up already. So I should be able to request this guy straight away. And now what I want to do is grab myself out a tank. Okay, so grab out a tank. Uh, these two are empty tanks. Yes, give me out two empty tanks here. I need one tank to be able to store the refined fuel that this guy is going to make now. Because we're going to get ourselves the pyrolyzer and set it up this way. I know this is a bit of a mess here, but I'm actually... Can I do it like right here like this? Fractioning still. And then add this fluid tank right here. This fluid tank here. Set the output on this guy here. Because I need to get rid of this creosote oil. This guy here is going to output there, input here. Uh, hopefully it's not going to take in the creosote oil, right? Oh yeah, because I need to actually say auto output first. 
And also, it's not going to output the right because I need to tell this thing to output you the right. Never mind, I already did. It didn't go in here, did it? No, it didn't. It just went in the tank above. Correct. Right. Output there. Input the top, actually. And remove this. Hopefully, that didn't fill this thing. No, it didn't. Good. And now, if I grab myself out, like, a, a chest or something. Actually, give me out two gold chests. I think that might be better. And what I'm going to do now is request up, like, about four stacks of butamin. Because this is how now we're going to make ourselves our refined fuel. You can't use coal, because coal will make creosin oil. But if you use butamin, you can actually make yourself heavy oil this way. So if we fill the pyrolyzer with butamin, let it run. I think it has a speed upgrade. It's still very, very slow. But getting it started now should get us at least a bucket of refined fuel. Now for when we make ourselves our pressurized chamber. So we just leave this run. But if I just press U on it quickly here, you can see inside a pyrolyzer, it'll make coke coal, but heavy oil and tar. The heavy oil goes into a fractioning still, which will make more tar, but it's at a 10% chance, and make refined fuel. So hopefully now, if I say auto input and eject, so the fuel will come in the left side, and when it finalized making it, it will pump it out into the tank in the right, and pump the items out into the top. Same with this guy, pull the items down, pump it out the right, and pump it... Actually, this guy doesn't have a place to send the items. Uh, I'll just have to keep an eye on it then. There's not much I can do. Unless I was to run pipes and stuff, but whatever. So, yeah. Now, give me out the seared ingot tank, because this magma crucible should be done with all the, the copper. Casting basin. Need the heart, the seared heater, the faucet, pour this out over it, and this will make us our controller. There we go. So now we have completed our entire smeltery. So now, come out here, and because I don't have enough room to put it in the system or inside the factory here. So I'm just going to do it out here for now. It's not going to be that big of an issue. So dig a tree by tree area. We're going to fill this entire thing now with the seared bricks. And then we're going to go tree across the back, tree across the side, and actually break the one in the middle at the back. Because this is where I'm going to put the actual seared fuel tank. Run this across there. And now we're going to get ourselves a seared drain. Actually, you know what? I kind of want a second one of these things. Let me go get a second seared drain. All right, second seared drain. I'm going to stick that right there. And now there's a full smell tree. Casting basin go in the ground here. Casting table go here at the two faucets. And now in here, I've got myself a chest and some hoppers. And I'm going to put a chest and a hopper system down here. Okay, so one chest is going to go right here. And you're going to hopper in the light gray concrete. Hopefully now, this guy isn't going to hopper out the, the light gray concrete, is it? No, it's not. Meaning, once I make myself the compressed iron, I'll be able to put it in here, melt it down, and then just keep pressing, or even set up like a redstone timer on the seared faucet just to keep pouring out the reinforced stone. Now, I probably could make more of this stuff. I, yeah, you know what? I probably will need more seared brick later. To make this thing a lot bigger and more functional. But for now, I think this is probably big enough. Yeah, I have enough room to go there. I guess put four back here, but whatever. Okay, so now this thing is ready to go. And now if I just grab out myself mechanical pipes, two tanks of lava, which I got myself before I started recording. I'm going to put one tank right here, another tank right there. This guy in the middle here. And I'm going to set these guys up to extract. Meaning this thing will have plenty of lava to run with for a while. Since so it's about 64 buckets. To use so now is, is this thing actually running still okay refined fuel tree but three hundred millibuckets perfect and we don't need the seared ingot tank anymore okay so now next up we need to make ourselves our liquid compressor but to do that we're going to need advanced pcbs for some hard integral components there's two ways to make this you can use plastic and printed circuit boards and printed circuit boards we can buy from a mechanic but the only issue is we can't make plastic yet because we do need to, of course, make liquid plastic, which comes from a thermodynamic processing plant, which requires LPG or biodiesel. We could make biodiesel this way using ethanol and plant oil from immersive engineering, but you know what? That's just another rabbit hole to go down, so I'm not going to do that. We're going to go through making it the other way. So I need logic circuits. Now, the logic circuits doesn't have a crafting recipe in JEI here, but it does tell me, crafted in an engineer's circuit table. 
And then your circuit table is this guy right here, which requires a redstone flux cell. I don't think you even have one, so make me a new one. For some reason, this guy needs power, apparently. It's a bit weird. I did look up a video on how to use this thing, because I had no idea. I've never seen this table before, and I think I know how to use it now, but it's still weird to me. I've never seen it. Is this, like, new to immersive engineering, or is that just for this pack? I don't know. I need myself a screwdriver, and now I'm going to need myself some marine fabric, which is prismarine crystals and some string. There we go. And I think that's more or less everything now. I think I have one of those tables, so if I just hit request here, it should request it. Yep. And now we should be able to hook this thing up to some power and craft some stuff. So according to it, it just needs circuit backplates and some copper wire to make yourself your logic circuits. I'm going to put it there because, of course, the power is on the back here, weirdly. But now if I put the two of these in here, say a set gate, I should be able to like request like a few of them to be made. It does require a little bit of power to make them, but I've no idea what inputs or outputs of white mean or like what any of these other guys are. So because everything here requires logic components, which are vacuum tubes, which we do not have yet. Hopefully we'll be able to make them after today's episode. So I'm done with that. Put all those away. Next up then is the advanced PCB, which requires RAM chips. I'm going to need three per thing, and I need two integral components, so request me ten of them. Ten RAM chips done. Next up, then, is this redstone probe connector. Don't know what this is. Request one of these. It makes four. Done. Next up, then, is the... Actually, that's it. So I just request one of these now. Actually, two of them. One and two. I think I can I can actually send the RAM chips back because I don't really need them. They're from RF Tools Control. Insert item into the process to get eight extra variables. Max 32. Okay, I'm going to have to look into what they do because if they speed up some machines from RF Tools, that'd be really good. All right, Alt-Click Request 1 set. Put this in here. There's one. Alt-Click again and put this guy in here. I can send the two of these guys back. I don't need them. There we go. Advanced PCB 2. Now I can make myself my hardened integral components if I have everything, hopefully. Advanced PC missing, that's fine. I could just alt click it twice and hopefully have everything. And they do stack, which is good. Okay, but it looks as if we are missing a redstone flux cell. So I need to make another one of them. All right, there we go. The second hardened integral component. Put one of these away and I'm going to... Should I hold on to this? No, I can put both of them away. I need one for the liquid compressor, and I'm also going to need one for a pressure valve, which is a bit weird. And also, I can buy pressurized tubes from a mechanic villager. I just need to make myself this charging station, which we can make now as soon as we get ourselves some compressed iron. Now, to make compressed iron, it requires a, a lengthy process, but it's actually not that bad. I need myself a multi server press, meaning I need three constant gears. There we go. And then I need myself a mechanical press, so hopefully I can make one of those pretty easily. There we go. Next up then is a block of steel. Don't know why a block of steel, but request me 10 of them. We have plenty of steel thanks to our steel bee. And then I'm pretty sure we have everything then. So request the multi-server press. And then next up, we're going to need ourselves a metal press mold 2x2 two two packing. This is how we're going to make our compressed iron. So just request this now and done. There we go. So to make compressed iron, you need yourself superheated steel ingots. You get this by doing an explosion craft. So I need obsidian, tar, and steel. So how much tar do we have in here? 14. Request all that. How much tar has been made over here? 29. And there's been none made in here. Oh no, two have. Okay. So I have 30, 45 tar, meaning now if I grab out steel and grab out 45 steel, and 45 obsidian, some TNT, and a flint and steel to be able to explode it now. Grab out all this, and let me go put the multi-server press down over here. Put this in here with the packing components. And now, we need to blow this up, and I'm going to do it on top of a tree over here. Because I don't know if TNT still destroys the area if it's in a claimed chunk. To be safe, I'll do it in somewhere that doesn't really mean anything. So, blow up this tree, why not? And also, I believe this stuff burns you if you hold it. Yes. So eat a cookie so you don't burn to death. Yeah, because superheated steel, caution, extremely hot. 
Now I need to go over here to our multi-server press and put it in here to pack it together to make ourselves hot compressed iron ingots. I know it's a bit weird, but this is how it has to be done. So I just sit here for a bit and just let all this compress down. I might even speed up a tiny bit. There we go, 44 hot compressed iron. Now, go over here and actually throw it in the water to cool it down. You have the 20% chance of using up a source block of water. If you look at it here, 20% chance consumption. There we go. Now we're starting pneumatic craft property in the quests. Now, I think actually another thing is I was looking at it there because it says something about um, superheated steel blocks. Is that something I was looking at? Because uh, that was a quest down in here. Hot compressed iron blocks. Can you do it in a block form? Two steel blocks, four, 18. Okay, it's still the same amount of recipes. So yeah, it doesn't really, doesn't matter which one you do. It's still the same amount. The only thing in this quest line we haven't done is Xnet and it's Foundry. But in terms of like completing it, we have completed our first tech tree, which is kind of cool. So next up, then we're working on this, a liquid compressor and a bucket of refined fuel. Have we actually made a bucket of refined fuel yet? Give me out two buckets because I actually have to go get a bucket of crude oil just to complete another quest. Have we made a bucket? Yes, yes, we have. There we go, bucket of fuel. And if we go over here and grab ourselves a bucket of crude oil just to complete the quest. There we go. And it turns out this bucket can actually smelt 50 items. Kind of cool. So if you want like a good source of like that instead of using lava you could probably use a crude oil if you have it lying around why did you like stamp why did it feel like he was about to come and attack me weird anyway so back out to our smeltery now now it's time to melt down some of this i believe per ingot you can do eight um refine or reinforced stone so this we're going to need a bit of it if i put four of it in it should give us a whole stack no, that'll only give us 32. Uh, but yeah, we'll just leave it run and see how much of the stuff we can make now. It only doesn't take long to melt down. Four ingots, put it on top, and you can see it goes very, very quickly. So I could just sit here and just hold right click and just fill it up like crazy. There, look, we've already made 10. And we've still got two ingots left. Okay, I either miscalculated or I didn't have enough grey concrete in here. But I've only managed to make 58, which is still more than enough. If I need to make more, I can make more. So, to turn this into the brick that's needed to make yourself your pressure chamber wall, you need reinforced brick, which is just reinforced stone in a 2x2. Uh, two two. So, I'm not going to do it all. I'll do half of it. There we go. And that makes 28. And then I'm going to do this and make ourselves 48 of that. You know what? Since we have four left over... Let me actually do it one more time so we can make ourselves an even uh, stack. There we go. So a stack of pressurized wall. So let's go upstairs now and make ourselves our chamber. My plan is to make a 5x5 five five one, but I don't think I have enough to do a 5x5 five five one. There, we could do a 4x4 four, a four four one. You know, actually, maybe a 4x4 four four won't actually be that bad. Okay, I almost have the whole thing built. We just need ourselves an interface now, which is compressed iron gears. So, you know, I'm going to put all the compressed iron in the system. I need to make more reinforced stone because some other things like the thermonomatic processing plant is going to require it. So is the refinery. So we're going to make ourselves now this guy. So I need probably about four. Oh, aluminium. Aluminium. Do we not have enough of that? Uh, three... That uh, give me out like 10 of it. There's one compressed iron gear. I must have used up all the aluminium making other gears. So we won't have to worry about that. Actually, maybe we could just use the the, uh, the press. That could probably work better. Anyway, so request me out like another three. Three should be enough for now. Actually, no, four. There we go. Six compressed iron gears because I forgot we're going to need two for this guy. Bellows. Let's make ourselves two bellows. And I think I have everything except for the small fluid tank. Basic tank not found. I think I used them all up uh, doing stuff. Like over there. So give me out like two new th tanks. And we should be good. Small fluid tank. Request one. Because I think I only need one for now. 
If I need another one, I'll make another one. But now I should have everything now to make ourselves a liquid compressor. So off it goes. And I, it says there, it comes with a security upgrade, meaning this thing will not explode if it overpressurizes, which is good. Now I just need some tubes. So 20 of these tubes should be more than enough. And the fact we already have some vortex tubes, which is pretty good. Uh, there we go. And now I can get rid of this crafting recipe in here. Next up then is pressure chamber interfaces. I need two of them. Because I need one for input and one for output. So two of them. And then last but not least, we need ourselves a pressure chamber valve. This is why we need a second integral component. Pressure tube not found, not a problem. I'll just alt click. Uh, okay, that glitched. Uh, just send these two back in for a second. And then make me a new one. There we go. Now we have our entire air compressor done. So I made myself some glass, which I'm going to put in the front here just so we can see inside. We'll put our interfaces like this. So blue means input and orange means output, I believe. Because if you look inside this thing, like in here, actually it's, you can't really see it, but in here it says input the items in and then orange kind of outputs out of the thing. So by facing it this way, Blue will mean it'll go in, so if we stick a hopper here, it'll fil filter the stuff in. When it crafts, I think we can even set this guy up to only extract out stuff after it's been crafted. Or maybe it's already doing that by default. I know that used to be an option you can turn on in here. But if we just stick our pressure chamber valve up here, boom, the whole thing turned on. You can see that door opened, and this door is open to allow us to input items, and it's ready to go. So, liquid compressor. Just going to stick it in the corner here, run some tubes up, and connect it now. This actually, this whole thing also has a security upgrade, which is nice. Fill it with the fuel, and now it's on. Now, the thing is, that will just keep wasting fuel unless we turn it off. I mean, we need a lever. Give me out a lever here. Okay. And now, if we go into this guy and say, redstone behavior, high signal. Meaning this thing will only work as long as there's a high redstone signal. Meaning we can stick a lever right here and turn it on. And you can see now the pressure is building up and the fuel is going down. So this guy has a security upgrade, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But if this thing can get up to about in between four and five, that'll be perfect. And while that's filling up with pressure, let's get to work on our next set of items. Now we need to our kiln. If we can make the kiln right now, that'd be great. So, for the kiln, we're going to need to set up smoldering lapis with blast brick, mud brick, and construction paste. I think I've already made myself a lot of blast brick, so give me out what I, all I have. Construction paste, give me out like a stack of that. And I think it was mud brick was the next part? I don't have any mud bricks, but I'll have to smelt up some mud now. Pretty sure you just smelt it? Yeah, you do. I can go over here to my redstone furnace and just get that smelted. So let's add the items in. So three sets of, of um, what was it? The blast brick, if I'm not mistaken. Three sets of blast brick and then that, okay. So I can break this into tree and break this into tree and have 42 per thing. That's more than enough. And then the construction paste can go in the last hand here. There we go. All we need now is the mud brick. Perfect. Now this thing is ready to go. Now for the smoldering lapis though, we need our coarse lapis compound, which is a heated mixer of ectoplasm, nether quartz dust, lapis, and tar. Okay, so give, give me out a stack of lapis. Give me out some quartz. Give me out some... I'm about to forget the, the third ingredient, ectoplasm. I have four of it, so it's not much. I could set up the spawner and go kill a load of wraiths right now, but I'm not really bothered doing that just yet. I'll just use what I have, unless this isn't enough. You know what? That's actually not going to be enough. So, yeah, I'm going to have to get out my cardboard box, but I have no idea which cardboard box it is. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go hunting for the, the one with the wraith in it. All right, here's the guessing game. Which one has it? Not you, because you're a blaze. There you are, wraith. And what's in the other ones? Skeleton and another blaze. Okay, so we just need the second one here. You've got the wraith. And we can send these back into the system. So taking this guy, let's go down to our spawner area and set this up. And you know what? Give me out like ice, sugar, and all the other stuff I'm going to need to make this thing go quicker. Right. Yeah, that spawner is pretty good. So I got 44 ectoplasm now to work with. 
Do I have anything in this thing at the moment mixing? No, I do not. It's just full of water. So if I break this, put it down, and we're good. I might need to change this filter to the smoldering lapis once I make a bit. But anyway, so to make ourselves the coarse lapis compound, it is crushed nether quartz and lapis. Can I just hammer this? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, I'm guessing this guy is completely filled with that. Yes, it is. Grab me out all the tar and stick that up there. Now, let's make one set first. Do I need any liquid in here? No, just tar, five lapis, and two this. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one tar, one ectoplasm. Okay, they're all the ingredients I need. Chuck them in. Okay, now I just need to go over here and get some coal to be able to heat up our burner. So if I can reach down there and burn him. I'm pretty sure we can automate him later on by like auto feeding him the stuff. But there we go. Coarse lapis compound. Take this out. Add it to the filter. Drop it back in. And now just throw all these items in. And just let it mix away a bunch of it. Hopefully we can make a good bit of it. I'm feeling that the lapis is not going to be enough. Okay. What are we out of? Yeah, it's definitely just the lapis. I've made myself another stack of it. So hopefully this will keep us going for a bit. So to get it into smoldering, we need to blast furnace it, which will take a while, meaning I am going to need the coke coal up here, because, of course, the blast furnace only works on coke coal. So just add these in here and wait a bit of time. We wouldn't have to, like, use the blast furnace if we had ourselves an arc furnace, because we could just throw all the ingredients in and make it immediately, which is definitely something we're going to make later on in the future. But, okay, it doesn't look like it's going to take that long, so that's good. And you've stopped mixing, and you've made me another seven. Good. Do I need this for anything else other than smoldering? No, it has to be smoldering, so I'll add it into the blast furnace as well. So, while that's cooking down, let's make ourselves our thermonomatic processing plant. Hopefully, this isn't going to be too difficult. So, I need two tanks. Okay, yeah, I thought I wouldn't have enough tanks. So, one of these, I make myself another fluid tank. Off it goes. And also... Give me out some of that compressed iron. I'm going to go over there and make myself another 32, um, uh, what's it called? Reinforced stone. Okay, so grab that, put that away, and now a small fluid tank, let that craft. This guy's already made me one, so I'm going to throw him on the belt now to be crafted into the next set of items. And once it's made one, how many times does this actually have to go through the loop? This has to go through it four times, and that makes four kiln brick. So that means I only need two smoldering lapis to make myself my kiln. This is round number three. So that's good. It shouldn't go any further once it hits a certain point. So it'll be fine. This is the last round now. So once it hits here, it should stop. So I should be able to catch it. Boom. Kiln brick. Grab it. Take off the filter. Add it to the filter. Stick it in and let it go. Then I'll just grab one more smoldering lapis here. And chuck it on and let it run. So, from here then, the Thurman product processing plant requires this. I almost have everything. Uh, oh, I'm making the... Oops, hang on. There we go. Uh, just stick these two in. And let me... I'm going to go out here and make myself as much reinforced stone as I can quickly. Right, so stone slabs. Put those back in the system now. Does this guy require anything underneath him? Or is he just one single block? I don't remember, I, it's been a long time since I've played with pneumatic craft. I think he's just one single block you just pump stuff into left and right. Yes, okay. So you're telling me if I just go upstairs and add it here, you will start filling with pressure. How much pressure is in this thing already? Not much. Wow, you are very, very, very slow. Now the only thing is, speed upgrades from pneumatic craft, we can't do just yet. Because you need, I think, lubricant? Let's see, speed upgrades. You need drop of glycerol, which comes from a fluid mixer of ethanol and vegetable oil, makes biodiesel. Wait, so we actually have to make biodiesel? That's the only way to make it? Byproduct of biodiesel production has several uses on its own. So yeah, we need to get drops of glycerol. Maybe we'll do that next episode, get ourselves some speed upgrades and biodiesel. But you can see it needs one bucket of lubricant, to get lubricant, you can buy it from uh, Amadron. So that's like the buying service in Pneumatic Craft. You just put one chest down, put the emeralds in it, or a tank next to it with emeralds, 
and you make yourself this Amadron tablet, fill it with pressure, request the item, a little drone comes in, takes the emeralds, and then and then flies back and comes back with them with the liquid you requested. It's kind of cool. We'll probably do it next episode now as well. So for now, uh, I think the only thing we need now from this kiln brick after it has made it, so we can crest, take this out and build it like right here. Oh, I thought I had this moved. Uh, okay, maybe not. We'll just stick it. We'll stick it. Can we actually just do it on top or should we just go upstairs and put it down? You know what? We'll stick it upstairs in this corner for now. It's not like it's going to be in the way of anything. Let's get ourselves out a hammer. And now let's see. So using the kiln, we need to make ourselves our blueprint. I don't see the smoldering course. Did I accidentally knock it off? I think I did. So we need to fill this guy and it has to be a little bit pressure of two with the smoldering lapis and water. So can I fill the thing just from a bucket? If I can, that'd be good. Grab out one of the smoldering lapises here. And I'll hold on. I'll just do other ones in the system. I only need like one for now. Grab out a bucket and go get some water. And come upstairs now. And can I just put the water in? I can. Good. And I'll just put this up here. So it's nowhere near the pressure. But can I speed this guy up to work faster? Has the, the thing to stop it from overflowing in case. So, oh yeah, you can see it rising up really fast now. It's almost there. The only thing is this guy doesn't have the warning thing. So it could be bad. Let me go get another bucket of fuel. I should have enough for another bucket, don't I? I do. Good. And it's almost at that right t uh, pressure now. So close. Uh, I don't want to add another tick acceleration onto it because that could be bad. Yeah, trying to spread it into the pressure chamber is not helping either. Oh, it's dropping. Okay. Just to get this done and over with. Boom. And it's starting to level out a tree. But there we go. Upgrade matrix. Come over here. Slap this thing with the hammer. If my game didn't freeze. Please don't tell me it crashed. My game might have crashed. Hang on. All right. I don't know why my game crashed, but finally it reloaded and it doesn't look like I got set back anywhere at all. And I logged back in and this alloy kiln was already made. So I don't know why my game crashed making it, but it's working now. So just give me a set of coal and put these upgrade matrixes inside so I can finally make these crafting components. So go upstairs, add it in here. I need one. Oh no, that goes down there. Do I need I need a book, don't I? You know what? Give me out the engineer's workbench as well, just because like I'm gonna have the blueprint for it now. That's common projectiles, arc electrodes. So yeah, the only one I'm missing really is just the crafting components. I can stick the table right here, stick the book in there, craft that, add it in here, and then we can make ourselves iron crafting components. We can make ourselves the steel crafting components, vacuum tubes, insulating glass, everything. There we go. Perfect. And like I said earlier in the episode, I have no idea if I've said some things or I haven't said things. I'm all over the place. Did I mention anything about the excavators from immersive engineering? I might have. I might not have. I can't remember. But yeah, because now we've just made this blueprint, we can make iron mechanical components, meaning we can make light engineering blocks. And this guy can go towards making us an excavator, which I'm really looking forward to set up soon because it turns out there is a nebu deposit you can find in the tomb and using immersive engineering's excavators you can dig up a ton of nebu this guy's only got a pressure of one so it looks like i'm gonna have to add speed upgrades or add more liquid compressors so from this episode or next episode or before it i will make myself a lot more um compressed or liquid compressors and something spawned i don't know what it was can I see it over here? Wait, did anything even spawn? Is it up there? Or not? Sometimes I hear lightning strikes and then I don't see anything spawned. So, yeah. I, I don't know if anything did spawn or not. But whatever. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. So, I'm going to end it there. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Hope to see you on the next episode. So, without further ado, goodbye. Goodbye.